Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to show you how I installed a fuel pump relay for my Walbro 450. A Walbro 450, if you install it and wire it with the stock harness, you're only gonna be able to make uh, 12 volts from that stock harness and if you look at the specs for the Walbro 450 or other fuel pumps they'll usually give you a rating of higher than 12 volts which allows you to flow more fuel so the only way for you to be able to flow more fuel is you need more power. So one way of doing that is stealing it directly from the battery or directly from your alternator. But essentially, we're installing this relay so that the stock harness will send that relay 12 volts, which will open a switch from a wire that goes directly from your battery or directly from your alternator to be able to flow more voltage. Because if you didn't know, your alternator generally, or your battery generally gets around 14 volts um, when the car is running or at higher RPMs. So we're gonna go and install this and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So I'm gonna go in the car. All right guys, so I'm in the back seat of the Prelude here. Um, I took the bottom cushion out, which you just uh, pull the little tabs on these little guys here to unlock the seat. There's two of them, one on this side, one on that side, right there and the seat lifts up and you can pull it out. And then the back part, you have to go in the trunk and pull the little tab to have this seat fold down. And then there's gonna be a bolt on this bracket and a bolt on that bracket that might be underneath of the uh, fabric that is on the back of that um, seat thing. And then after you get under here, you're gonna notice there's gonna be a brace like this that's bolted up. But you take the 10 millimeter bolts out of that, that gives you more access to where your fuel pump is. Um, now, my setup it might be a little bit different than yours because I actually have my battery in my trunk back there, as you can see, but I'm gonna go through this as if you were running it straight from the front of your car. So, all you really need to know is this is your relay, and I bought this relay off of Amazon, but if you're able to understand electrical electric circuitry, when you look at this relay, it gives you a diagram of how this circuit works. So you have your coil right here, which um, you know, you're gonna have a positive and a negative side of that. And that's our signal wire and our ground wire, which on a stock prelude harness, uh, your grounds are always usually black with a little silver dot on them, as you can see here, it has a little silver dot. And then your signal wire is your black with your yellow stripe on it, and it also has a silver dot on it. So those two wires are basically what is going to trigger this relay to close a switch. You can see on this, uh, relay that it, it actually has a diagram of a switch. Notice how 887A and 30 um, are a closed switch, but 87 and 30 are an open switch. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use 85 on the left as a ground wire and 86, is that 86? Can't tell. Uh, it looks like 86 to me. 86 down there at the bottom left, and those are gonna cause a coil, electric coil, to pull this switch from, you know, its current position at 87A and 30. It's gonna pull that little, little lever there over to 87 and 30. And that's basically gonna close our switch. So going through the wiring, just for some of you visual learners, um, I have my power wire, which is coming up here from power from my battery, right? This is my um, waterproof uh, breaker right there. My power is coming from my battery, going into this blue wire, and the blue wire is then 
feeding into focus camera. My headlamp's messing with it. I'll turn it off. So your power wire is coming in and feeding into this blue wire. And that blue wire is gonna be 87, okay? See 87 on there? And then the ground wire or the other side of the switch is gonna be this red wire, which actually goes down to the fuel pump to feed it, you know, 12 or 14 volts, depending on what it is. Notice how the black and white wire on this relay are actually smaller gauge wires. And that's because we're not gonna be flowing extra current or extra voltage through that aside from the 12 volts, because these are our signal wires. So white goes to the black and yellow stripe or the signal wire and then ground and um, the ground wire goes to that other side. So once you have your signal and ground wire wired into 85 and 86 on the relay, uh, you should be able to switch this relay um, with the stock harness. Now before I enrage a bunch of electricians here uh, without talking about this, anytime you run power from a power source to uh, you know some sort of draw, uh, i.e. the fuel pump, you always want to use a fuse. And looking at this setup right now, it looks like there's no fuse, but I got you. So inside of here, I put my waterproof fuse. And this fuse is on this red wire right here because power is coming in through the relay and coming down this wire to feed that fuel pump. And you wanna have a relay, or sorry, you wanna have a fuse in there just in case too much current goes through that wire and it causes um, you know, more current to flow through the wire and burn it up. It says 30 amps on there for all those electricians out there. And that 30 amp fuse is gonna break the, the circuit if uh, too much voltage current goes through there. So definitely include a, uh, a fuse in between that you know relay or before the relay, however you wanna do it. Um, some people would put it before the relay just so the relay doesn't get, get damaged, but I could care less. I have two of them, it's really cheap on Amazon. So. Down inside of here is where your fuel pump is. Um, and you can pretty much set that up however you desire. Now, if you're gonna run ethanol, uh, I suggest doing what I did and run uh, PTFE lines, which are rated for ethanol. They have a Teflon liner inside, and that's why I have these uh, couplers on there. And then this is just my uh, return. So the return is fine, it doesn't have to be anything special. It's not rubber the whole way back, it's metal and a piece of plastic that is rated for ethanol. So I'm gonna pull this fuel pump and then I'm gonna show you the next thing that you have to do. All right guys, well I pulled the fuel pump and um, this annoying headlamp is in the way, but basically in the top here, there's a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts that uh, are bolted down to little studs down, down there, see them right there? And uh, basically all you have to do is take those off. I unclip the fuel line right here you just squeeze these two back sections and slide the line off um, but because mine is a compression fitting um, for the fuel line there the PTFE AN line it's a 6 AN line um, I did not disconnect that uh, what I did do is disconnect the uh, electronic sensor that basically tells how much fuel is in the fuel tank um, just to help ease it out. But as you can see, I got that fuse in there. That red power wire follows its way down through a hole I drilled in the top of the fuel pump. That comes down, goes right to the Walbro 450 fuel pump. And then it goes, uh, you know, you have your ground wire that's mounted directly to your fuel pump mount itself. Now this is a stock fuel pump um, mount that I just fit the Walbro 450 in there and it does fit pretty snugly. And I also use PTFE Teflon 
tubing to connect the two. Because if you put a piece of black rubber in there, it's gonna, over time, probably wear away and you're gonna go lean, which, unless you have a good wide band like I do that cuts your tune, um, that's game over. So, I hope this helped you guys out just to see how everything was routed there. Um, but basically, that's all you have to do. Um, the OEM uh, sock can fit onto the Walbro 450. And uh, yeah, works great, guys. But that's all I got for you. I hope this... Uh, if I can get the camera. I hope this video wasn't too long. Um, but it's definitely a cool upgrade for those who are trying to flow more fuel. So uh, till next time, guys, I'm out.